you take a look at the info page of my YouTube channel, you will see that I registered it on the 24th of April, exactly two years ago this day. Which means that we will have to celebrate that in this special live show. Well, live, this is sort of live on tape. How will we be celebrating, you might be wondering? Well, by showing you some of the vintage hardware that I have acquired over the past years. Not all of them, because some of them are in my storage unit or in other bins that are a bit hard to get to. And to tell you the truth, I think I added at least 100 systems to my collection. Let's start by taking a look at some of the PCs and Macs that I added over the past two years. I almost broke my back carrying these down the stairs. Here are 10 of them. Some of them from the Dutch version of eBay, others found in thrift stores or by other means. Let's start. Believe it or not, but this is the Power Macintosh G3 I started to restore a while back and I showed in an episode of Computer TLC. Here we have the two IBM 5150s, a recent pickup probably from someone's estate. One works and another one probably needs some work on the power supply. So as you probably know they run on Intel's 8088 processor and are famous for introducing the world to the personal computer. Both came with the 5151 monitors. The keyboards shown are by Tulip. These PCs are not only fun to play with, but also are great just to look at as a piece of art. I also adopted an IBM 5150 this year, which is owned by and residing at the Home Computer Museum. This is an Apple Macintosh 2 CE that I bought from someone that wasn't publishing. The CE was introduced in 1981, it has a 25 MHz Motorola 68030 CPU and is an improved version of the 2CX. Interestingly mine came with a video card. I believe people chose that option because the onboard graphics use up some of the RAM, but I will have to do some research on that. This is also one of those Macs that has the signatures of the production team hidden under the motherboard. The CE is followed by one of my favorites, or maybe my favorite. Why? Well, this is the computer that started it all. This computer is the reason that I am surrounded by CRTs, have more than once smelled the smell of exploded capacitors, and I got this computer because I stumbled upon it while I was looking for old IBM typewriters. I got intrigued, so I put in some bits and went to pick it up. It runs on an Intel 8286, has a 3.5 inch floppy drive, and has an internal hard drive that still works great, and of course it came with a wonderful clicky Model M. HP Vectra I got from the shop at the Home Computer Museum. It has the motherboard with the CPU and the CD drive and the floppy drive, but it needs a new hard drive. It's my first HP computer and I think it will be a fun project to see if we can get it up and running. This is a Borsu 10 Plus, yes, a name also not really familiar to me. I purchased this computer from another collector, I think, since I bought more systems from this person. Like another one I will show just now and one that's in storage. It was very cheap. I think if I wanted I could even sell the disk drive for more, but I hate selling. It comes with a 5.25 and, and a 3.5 and inch drive, needs some retrobrite and currently is not outputting any video. And I would love to see if I can find a little bit more info about the company Borsu. More to come on this system. This is the Laser 286 I picked up with Bianca and Sandam from a nice guy that even was a bit hesitant to let go of his first PC. Betsy got a bit angry at my monopod when I was filming it. Laser is the name of the personal computer branch of VTech. I think it's from around 1984, but I will have to check that. It needs some TLC too. This black box is a Casablanca Avio, an interesting editing machine, I think only released in the Netherlands but I'm not sure. It has a lot of out and input. I found it in the latest episode of Circle Walking for under 5 bucks and still have to see if it works, what I hope, so I can edit one of my videos using it. The last 
last two PCs I'm excited to show you. Both are made by the Dutch company Tulip, a company I would love to make a video about and have already recorded some footage for. This is a Tulip PC Compact 2. This is the other PC that I got from the same seller as the Borsu. It's running on an NEC V20 microprocessor, but needs a bit of work. When I get it working it will be great, because it's way smaller than the other PCs in its class. Also has the two different drives, which is great for writing discs for other systems. This bigger one is a Tulip System PC Compact. This one I got a while back, it looks awesome on the inside, but I still have to test it out. I was surprised that the seller would go through the trouble of shipping this giant computer. It has some rust on the back, which we can maybe fix, runs on an 8MHz 8088, has two 5 inch drives and an internal disk drive that I hope we can still boot off. This will definitely be getting some screen time in the future. Moving on to the next systems, these I like maybe a little bit more, because they take up less space than those lovely giants. So what do we have here? Well, let's start with this awesome ti 99 a an architecture that I'm totally new to, so I'll have to take some time to get to know it. I like the way the keyboard looks, and the cartridge slot is awesome to use. It came with a giant RF modulator. The computer uses BASIC and runs on a TMS-9900, which is totally new to me. Sadly the steel looks off, it's a bit dented. We'll be looking for ways to carefully fix that. This is a Canon V20, a nice MX6 computer. Of course, well I didn't check, but would be weird if it's something else. It runs on a Xilux Z80 CPU and Microsoft Basic. I love that it has a simple composite video out, but it needs a good clean and I'm looking for an STL file to make a replacement cartridge door. These are two Commodore 64 C's I have. The one being my first Commodore 64. Oops, I broke my rule, I believe. That one I own a bit longer than two years. I like the design, although the internals are so cost reduced. I think over the past two years I added about eight Commodore 64s to my collection, and most of them, if not all, need repairs. So they will be great to use to develop my fixing skills. This is a CPC-464, not by Amstrad, but by Scheidner, a difficult name, that I got recently, but it's a bit in a disassembled state since I already started the TLC on it. Sadly I fear the cassette deck is beyond repair, but I will try to see if I can get it partially up and running, or we will have to mod it to allow an, for an external deck. This is also a very unfamiliar platform for me as a retro amateur, so I'll have to do some research on that too. A lovely TRS-80 Model 100 portable computer, one of my favorites. A Model 200, even nicer. This one I got untested from the Dutch version of eBay for a great price. I really love this one, since it takes just 4 AA's to run and is an easy machine to set up if I want to play around in MS Basic. I have some accessories I want to show off in a future video too. 
This is a Timex 1000. Shocked that people use computers like this, but also quite interested to see what the actual experience is going to be like. Other systems that I'm quite amazed by that people use them as computers are these, pocket computers. Starting with this Sharp PC1211. this Sharp PC3000. A TRS-80 PC3. A Texas Instruments TI-1200 that I felt intrigued to show. A TRS-80 Pocket Computer PC2, which has a lovely form factor and is very thick. A Casio FX880P, which acts a bit weird, so needs some attention, although small devices like this must be tough to work on. And finishing with a Casio that I will keep hidden away, so it will be a surprise when I show it in a computer TLC. Let's clear the table and fill it within a second with a bunch of new systems. A Tenny 1000EX. I was excited to add one to my collection. Since I really love Tenny stuff. Oh well, all stuff, but Tenny stuff a little bit more. Although Tenny stuff is also a bit hard to get for fair prices these days. It sold for a thousand bucks back in the day and has a five and a quarter inch disc drive on the side. Mine needs a clean and some retro bright. I think it will be fun to see what it looks like on the inside. This Toshiba Satellite 4200 series I picked up for 5 bucks at my local thrift store. Came with the power supply so we will have to see what's on it in a future video. Add that to the long list of other future videos. A Apple PowerBook 180, an impulse buy that needs some repairs. I got awesome repair tips on Reddit so it will be nice to put those to the test. Compact Armada 510 with an internal PSU that I got from the same place as the Toshiba. Two more MSX machines. One by Philips, the VG8020 with gummy keyboard but nice box and an awesome Toshiba HX10 with 64K of RAM just like the Philips. Here's my small family of all-in-one Macs. Never met someone that doesn't like their form. This is the second Macintosh SE FDHD that I got. It has a bit of an issue. Listen to this.
We have a checkerboard. This is the Macintosh SE FTHD that I repaired slash opened up and closed in the first episode of Computer TLC and got to working order with a working SCSI hard drive. This Macintosh Plus I also got from the Home Computer Museum and will be nice to see what's up with it. Its overall condition is great. This classic on the other hand is rather sadly at the moment. It's missing a piece and has a lot of corrosion. I hope we can save some parts or the whole deal. This awesome VC20 needs some restorations too, but doesn't look half bad in its current state. My Senyo MBC also needs a mention, since it's my most popular video on my channel at the moment. This giant and very heavy computer is a bit mysterious and needs some research. It has two awesome 8 inch disk drives and the aircraft carrier of a keyboard. Two awesome guys from the states help me get the required 8 inch disks. I'm a bit hesitant to start works on it, since I can't find the service manual and because of its size. More to come, definitely, but when, I'm not sure. This Commodore pad was also a lovely addition to my collection. Also like the 5150s, only for the looks, a great machine. It worked great for a while, but now needs some work to be running again. Hopefully nothing special. I have a lot more machines. Machines that are a bit tough to get to. Like the ones upstairs shown shortly here, and the ones in my secret storage unit. Where for instance the Senyo also resides. So a whole bunch of machines that I'm happy to say even my doggo Betsy got very used to already. Thanks for celebrating this 2 year anniversary of this micro channel with me. Retro Mouse and Betsy out.